Hey you who mess with JS, Aegis here and welcome back to getting started with ECMAScript 6. In this video we're going to talk about promises, one of the latest features of ECMAScript 6 and the one that I'm uh, the most uh, kind of happy and excited about and I'm using them already along my project. So let's go ahead and start uh, explaining what promises are. So just shortly in a couple of sentences, basically promises are not like callback functions. Callback functions are functions and promises are objects. So promises kind of return the data, while functions are uh, uh, where uh, functions uh, callback functions are most more like events. So that's the biggest difference between them. And um, promises can have four states. Promises can be uh, fulfilled, which means that uh, promise is fulfilled. It's it succeeded. They can be rejected or they can fail. They can be pending, which means that they're not either of those two things, they're not either fulfilled nor rejected, and they can be settled, which means they're fulfilled or they're rejected. So basically these are the four states uh, that a uh, promise can be in, and promises are uh, pretty much uh, all about states. So uh, yeah, like I said, callbacks are functions and promises are objects. So to kind of stop with all the theory, uh, let's go ahead and just start writing some promises. So let's say, yes, let's start using let a keyword that we uh, learned about in the previous video. So let's say let uh, my uh, my promise is equal to a function, and each promise returns a, a, a new promise, so return new promise, and each promise has functions called resolve and reject. So we pass in a callback function with, with resolve and reject. So basically this is a this is body right now of our new promise. We can show how they work. So if we create something like let uh, number is equal to five and if number is less than, uh, bigger than four, if five is bigger than four, resolve and we can resolve either we can say something like resolve this number or we can say promise was resolved otherwise we will reject and we can throw an error in the reject we can say new error an, uh, an error object which is part of the, the javascript itself and we can say uh, an error occurred promise was rejected and here we have our first promise uh, every promise has a then and catch methods uh, then method is uh, something we usually use when we uh, when our promise is fulfilled so we say function and uh, result so if promise is resolved, we'll go to this method function here and we will just console log resolved. And if it's uh, an error or if, uh, if promise was rejected, we can just say here rejected. This is completely optional and we can console log this rejected. So if you go ahead and run this, we'll get promise was resolved, obviously because number is uh, 5 is bigger than 4 and if whatsoever we change this we get an error an error occurred promise was rejected so basically this is a uh, pretty much uh, entire logic about promises and we're going to show a little bit more complex examples now and, and see how they work so this is a promise uh, that either resolves or rejects and it has one then method but whatsoever we can change these then methods as long as there was no error occurred. Also, before we continue, I just want to mention that you don't really necessarily need to use catch, you can just do something like this, and it will work exactly the same. As you can see, an error occurred, and if we put the greater than four, promise was resolved. I personally prefer to use catch, but you, you don't need to. But like I said previously, we can change these methods, we can change the dens. So what I usually do, I write it like this, so we can say uh, then we can say something like uh, return five, and then we can say function data console log data. And if we save that and run it, okay, obviously we we need to change this. 
if we run this we're gonna get five so basically every time you you put a return uh return inside of your den it will return the data to the function and then pass it to the next den so if you go ahead now here and say return batman and then create another den here so create another den and console log i don't know let's say uh, uh, hero and if we go ahead here and say console log hero save that run it we're gonna get batman so you can change these chain these methods as long as you as you prefer but the the way they work uh, they stop chaining or executing as soon as they catch an error so for example if we if we would say something like like this throw uh i don't know error what's up and try to run this everything after will stop executing so basically you can chain a promise methods as long as they are error free uh, and until they get to an error so basically let's say that we in then is in then that's in, in this then method we had something like uh, if this data which is five is uh, greater than six for soul um actually i'm not sure if we can do this Let, let's try I'm, I'm, not, I'm not positively sure but uh uh, yeah, actually, I'm not sure. Let's try first with resolve, uh, resolve data else, but I don't think that this, that will work. And otherwise, reject uh, is not greater. So if we try to run this, reject is not a function exactly. So instead of this, let's just say new error. So actually, no, let, let's just say throw new error but we need to do it here uh, no actually we need to do it here and otherwise just return is all good bro so as you can see here the error didn't occur this return was returned and passed to the next then and this next then was printed out so it's all good bro is actually here now so as you can see as long as your logic allows you to continue chaining them they will chain otherwise they will end in the catch method here so basically if we change this like this now this error will be thrown into rejected so if we go ahead you will see that error as the s so i think this is pretty clear and i'm actually glad i could explain this in the I guess proper proper way also uh, there is uh, something that we need to talk about a uh, new function which is called promise.all this function basically grabs uh, multiple uh, multiple promises and, and kind of puts them together so if you create something like let promise one is equal to a, a new promise you can also make promises like this and then pass in the function resolve and reject and let's just do something let's just resolve let's let's not reject so let's let's remove this so if you don't have to reject anything in your promises you don't need to pass in so resolve first promise pro and then you can say let's just copy like two of them and let's say like second one and here is second one so if you go ahead now and try and test out our new our promise dot all so basically the way it works it uses uh, the, these brackets the, the array ones and you pass in your promises the one we previously defined so promise one and actually let's name it promise two And then, of course, as usually we use then, and then we say function, and we say, I don't know, let's say data. And if we go ahead and console log data, and let's first clear this. As you can see, we're gonna get our promises in the array. So first promise bro and second promise bro, which is pretty neat, pretty pre pretty useful function, honestly. And uh, I believe that it can be used in many many great ways so basically um, let me let me go back to, to my screen so basically um, 
this promise grabs them all together and puts them in the array as you can see now we have kind of uh, control log our data our array and uh, what we what you could do is you could simply say like uh, you could destructure these things by saying I don't know like var of uh, I don't know like or let's use like let of first promise is equal to data so if we console log first promise now we're gonna get first promise bro so you basically now access them as the elements of the array with uh, with the array uh, uh, position or we didn't talk about it but we will we could use the structuring which is part of ECMAScript 6 we could say something like this so uh, first and second is equal to data and now basically Now basically we could say something like console log first and run this and we're gonna get first parameters bro. This is called the structuring, we're gonna talk about it. Basically, this is equivalent to what we just did. This is equivalent to saying like let first is equal to uh, to data one, zero and uh, second is equal to data one. So this line here, it's called the structuring in ECMAScript 6 and is it equivalent to this but as you can see this is much much prettier and faster to write so yeah so yeah basically this was pretty much entire video about uh, promises um, uh, there's not much more to say really for the native promises in JavaScript if you want to find find out more you can online there are many things where you can look for but this was the most crucial things for you to know so yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching the video and messing with the JS. I hope that you will progress with this and I hope that you will mess with JS more. And in the next video, I'm not sure what we're going to do, most likely arrow functions or something like this. So thanks for watching the video. Thanks for staying tuned with JS Broadcast and me, Aegis, and see you in the next video.